It's time for the show that engages with people of the combat sports world. And now, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed combat sports show champion of the world, Flash Knockdown! Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me on episode 15 of Flash Knockdown with the reigning, defending, almighty fighting, amateur, lightweight champion, and the reigning, defending, Cage Warriors Academy, lightweight champion, marvelous, Marcus. Lewis! Welcome There's to only the one marvellous, and it's Marvin, you know that. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, it's I like it, but I'm not taking it, yeah. You're not taking it? <laughs> oh. That's fucking illegal. Marvellous, That's Marvin, a dagger through the heart, man. I feel oh, like he's wow. still Marvin. Oh, oh Marvin, I don't know. No. Next week, come and get me, mate. Oh, you know what he's God. Like? Oh, God. How are you, Marcus? I'm not bad, brother. How was yourself? Very well. Excited to be on? I am, yeah. So excited and um, a bit nervous at the same time. Don't really sort of avoid it doing this sort of thing for a while, but at the same time, let's go, you know what I mean? I'm happy to be here. Good. Don't worry. I'm nervous too. <laughs> you do it's this not... all the time, bro. I don't like this, you know what I mean? I've avoided this, but let's go. I'm ready. I'm happy to be here. Good. I appreciate good. it. You're welcome. Well, it's an honour to have you on the show, Marcus. And before we go any further... Could you give the viewers an overview of your MMA career, the gym you represent, and how people can find you online, please, Marcus? Yeah, um, basically, I've been doing MMA about three years. Um, been a little bit active this year and halfway through last year, obviously this year due to coronavirus and last year due to like a little bit of personal things. How many fights have I had? Um, I think I'm six or seven and one. I'm not too sure, to be honest. I should have checked really before we came on, but I'm there, thereabouts. Um, I train at Titanium MMA in Dan Liverpool under Gavin Hughes and James Lewis. Um, what, what else was to the question? Sorry, <laughs> where was I? Was that yeah, all you wanted from me? Yeah, and how people can find you online. Because oh, it's all about you. In Instagram, Marcus Lewis MMA. Don't bother with Facebook. I don't really look at it. Fine. Okay. Well, you know where to find him. Instagram. Yeah, that's where you find me. Nowhere else, bro. I'm a bit of a nightmare for everything else. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Marcus, for that. And we now move on to the next part of the show that I've called Flash Choices. For first-time viewers, I will ask Marcus 10 questions with two possible answers. And Marcus, you choose the one that best suits in a flash. Got it? Cool. <laughs> okay, brother. First one, Marcus. Kickboxer or blood sport? Blood sport. Blood sport, why? Yeah. Kumite. Don't like kickboxer. <laughs> never have. Never have liked kickboxer. Enough, really? <laughs> yeah, never have. Okay. Yeah. My, dad, my dad had a little bit to do with, like, on the sets and that and told me, like, things that were going on. Like, I'm I not see. really a Van Damme fan. Apparently, I see. Yeah, like, Obviously, you've seen in later life, he broke down crying, doing all the things he'd done in the past. And he's just not like a real fighter, is he? So I can't get behind. No, he's not. I think he started off as a ballerina. Yeah, you or know ballet. what I mean? So he's, he's suspect anyway, so. <laughs> the muscles from Brussels. Yeah. The <laughs> second one, Marcus. The 2nd of March, 2019. Or the 25th of May, 2019. <laughs> What's, so the, what's the significance? What's the significance for all first? You tell me. So the 2nd of March, 2019, yeah. Yeah. or the 25th of May, 2019. Oh, Marcus, you've won too many titles. You've, what's this from? You've stopped counting. So the 2nd of March, 2019 is when you yeah. won the, the Cage Warriors Academy title. 
Oh, you know more than me, lad. I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> I could never tell you that. You were never going to get me there. I was thinking whose birthday is it or what's going on here. Yeah. Um, either or, either or, they're both good nights. I couldn't compare. I couldn't compare either. No? Okay. Um, wow. All right, but whichever Go on, one give us one. Mighty, whichever one was the almighty one. 25th of May. Yeah. That one. All right, that cool. Good, yeah. yeah, that was good. All right. <laughs> Exciting night. It was. It was. And we'll cover that later. Don't worry. Yeah. Cool. So third one, Marcus, Super Sage Northcutt or Stephen Wonderboy Thompson? Wonderboy. Wonderboy. Any yeah. reason? Yeah. I just like his style a little bit more. The way he, he's longer. Don't get me wrong. I'd like to see him maybe be better in the pocket, but I just prefer to. I gravitate more to him. I couldn't give you a particular, particular reason, to be honest. I just gravitate a little bit more to him. Sure. Yep. He defeated Jeff Neal at the end of 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fourth one, Marcus. Sweet corn or tiger nuts? Ooh. <laughs> uh -huh. You like that that's one, a, isn't it? That's a, that's a coffee question. That I'll give you that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet I'll corn. Do my research. Sweet, Sweet corn. corn. Yeah. yeah. Why? It, it's all round and effective. Tiger nuts filled them up too much. I see. I see. See, only on Flash, Flash Knockdown do you get to learn about fishing baits and MMA at the same time. <laughs> 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 Fifth one, Marcus. Spinning wheel kick or spinning back fist? Spinning heel kick. Spinning wheel kick. Spinning wheel kick. Can't wheel kick. Yeah, you love that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. When it lands, it's spectacular. Everyone it really does erupts. Everyone does erupt. Absolutely. Sixth one, Marcus. Big tasty burger or Gavin Big Tasty Hughes? No question, Gavin, big tasty Hughes, no question. <laughs> Tell us about your relationship with Gavin and how he's helped you in your transition to MMA. Um, just nothing but love between us, just there for each other, just pushing each other all the time, you know what I mean? Just, um, he helped me transition by basically accepting what I already had, not trying to change it. Like when I've, I've been to like a few different places trying to do MMA before I started, and he sort of tried to just adjust everything and... So to change it to like a carbon copy of everybody else in the gym, but he works with me, talks with me, takes my knowledge on, basically merges his knowledge of me to make me all around better fighter, which is what MMA is all about, isn't it? It really so, is, yeah. Yeah, he's helped me grow a lot. And are you helping him um, prepare for his return to Bellator in April? As a body, yeah, for him to throw around on the floor. <laughs> yeah, he's probably... Try and get a kick or two in there, but you know, my man's mean on the ground. Sis yeah. Is, yeah, once he gets old, he's like a shark. Once he's got old, yeah, yeah, he's the, he is. yeah, he's the king of the um guillotine chokes, isn't he? Gavatine, I'm telling you, Gavatine, yeah. I love Gavatine, that. man. Yeah, he was Gavatine, talking about that today, man. funny enough, he was literally really? talking about that today, yeah, yeah, literally half ten this morning. That's brilliant, there, Gavatine. Really talking about that. Gavatine. And, and um, if you had to choose your favorite burger, what would that be? I'm a play, very plain guy, you know. Um, just a, any good beef burger, mate. I'd, I'd first go to a pub than a Mackey's or something. You know, <laughs> a, 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 thick, a thick piece, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, easy. yeah. Okay. Next one, Marcus. Ryu or Ken? Ken. Ken, okay. Yeah. WKF champion or UFC champion? UFC. UFC. Yeah. yeah. Do you have course. aspirations? Aspirations of um, making it to the UFC one day? Um. Yeah, I think every cage fighter does. I'd be lying if I said no altogether. You know what I mean? But right now, it's not like the main place I'm looking towards. I think I'd sure. like to try like the Asian route first. Okay. Just to, like get get more experience on that sort of circuit, and then obviously move on up into the UFC. Sure. Absolutely. John Conti or Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew, Scouser, yeah. of course, got to get behind my man, of course. Yeah, John Conti's a Scouser, I think from uh, no. Kirby. Yeah, but that's not, that's not Liverpool, is it? Is that, is that, is that not Liverpool? <laughs> it is and it isn't. Merseyside? It, yeah, yeah, you can't, it's, it's not. It's not ah. Liverpool. Like, you see my man running around Sefton Park at half five in the morning doing the same laps I do, you know what I mean? Right. He used to come to our gym as a kid, to be honest. That's right. My dad was very good friends with his dad, Tony. So, um, obviously, he's passed, like, this, you know, the whole Mushin Kai family in a distant way, but we're obviously supporting. That's right, yeah, because um, Tony was was being trained with your dad when he was doing kickboxing at about 10. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah. He was, I think he got to his brown belt, I think. 
Because yeah. his dad used to do the doors with my dad. So obviously right. he knew my dad saying people, so he brought him to us and he done training with him. Then I think he went to the boxing straight off. Okay. And Kirby is not part of Liverpool. It is. It is. I'm not saying it's not Liverpool altogether. Right. It's just it's just a little bit on the motorway on the outside, Liverpool. You know, <laughs> you know, like, okay. No, I'm not, I'm not against it. Like I've got loads of mates from Kirby and that, but at the same time, it's it's Kirby. I look at Kirby as Kirby. Okay. Love it. You're very loyal. I love that. And then the last one, Marcus. James Lewis or Joel Lewis? James Lewis. James, James Lewis. Lewis. I'm, not, I'm not the biggest boxer anyway. He's the biggest boxing fan anyway. So you're never going to get me on there as a James Lewis all day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was actually meaning uh, Joe Lewis, who is known as the father of American kickboxing and uh, twice voted oh, the greatest. Joel, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. Uh, yeah. The greatest uh, you karate put me a sticky practitioner. One there, didn't you? you put yeah. Me a sticky one there. Yeah. So I'll repeat the question James yeah, yeah. Lewis. Yeah, oh, or Joe Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, I'll answer for you. James, Joe Lewis. Sheer doggedness. No, just James. Sheer James. And, and All right. But there you put me a sticky one there. I'll ask you. And this is still my boy. Good. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> Sorry, okay, fair enough. And how did you find that overall, Marcus? Good questions? Yeah, I enjoyed it. That was good questions. I like that. I was, quite, I was yeah. surprised by some of them, but it was good, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm a bit slow, you know, as well. I've been fighting my whole life, you know, been getting punched in the head all the time. So sometimes you, see, you take a little split second to get where we're going. No, you were fighting. That, I'm not big on names and fighters. I'm, I don't watch a lot of fighting. People think I'd be into it every single day, you know what I mean? I watch who I'm going to fight and certain fighters who I like to take things off. I won't yep. sit there and watch a whole UFC card. I don't know how people are. I'm, I'm shocking, to be honest. You know I mean? <laughs> well, you did very well there. Very, very well there, Marcus. And I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Good. Yeah, it's good sounds. Fantastic. Thank you, Marcus. So normally, Marcus, I'd be keen to flash back and look at how you got into martial arts, but that's already well documented. So instead, let's look at your MMA flashlights. First of all, we haven't really heard you speak in any great length on your MMA career. Is there a reason why? Uh, no particular reason. I've been like spoke to you about doing a few podcasts and that in the past, but I've always just sort of a fight as long as I'm fighting we're doing something you know what I mean so there's been a bit of a lull obviously right now so I think this is like the perfect time sit down so I hope you have a career you know what I mean first like time I've seen as a good opportunity for myself to sit down perfect. as well perfect well I'm glad you chose Flash Knockdown to do that that's great so to set the scene for everyone Marcus is one of the best UK amateur mix mixed martial artists with a striking ability that comes with being a fifth and black belt why did you decide to make the move to MMA, Marcus? Um, I love my sport that I come from. It's just, it's not grown. There's no sort of, there's only so much more you could do. There was only so much more I could do within the sport. There's still a few big competitions I could have went to and fought in, but <sighs> what for? Me, me paying to go around the world to pay to fight, which... You know, it's how a sport starts and how a sport can evolve, but there's too many organisations. You know, you can be a WACO champion, a WK champion, a WKC champion, WMO, ICO, the AG, AAF, whatever, let's say acronyms you want to make up. It's just too diluted, you know what I mean? And like I say, there's no prospect of being pro. You can say he's a high-level fighter, he's a world-level fighter, but it's down to you as a spectator or a fighter to decide who is that as opposed to a real board who sits down and says, here's number one, two, three, four. So it's just, um, I wanted a bit more from what I'm putting in. Yeah. And with karate now being included in the Olympic Games, do you feel that's that's a step forward in the right direction? It is. It is. But the Olympics is going to dilute it out a little bit. It's going to make it more... It was Wacko, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't Wacko get in? Yeah, they're, to be honest, they're one of the biggest. But it's just that... They're going to have to now abide to the rules on the thing. It's not going to be all power and shots. I'm not saying it's all about He's not all taking your head off. But it's still in the 80s when you landed a punch. If you didn't get like a bit of a reaction from them, you couldn't just touch them. You needed a little bit to see that that shot had a little bit of effectiveness. Like it would be in the street. That's the idea of a point. The idea of a point in my mind is to, when it's on, be the first to land the shot, be effective, hit the person. And then the referee says stop. But in real life, that's you getting the first shot. And normally in the street fights, whoever gets the first shot gets the second and the third shot and it's over, isn't it? It's done. 
Yeah. So, so does um, so does MMA um, work better for you in that case? It's just that I'm going to get more for what I'm putting in. I know that there's some sort of end goal. There's something I can sit there and put my mind towards, and I can go. I want this. I want that. I can aim towards the UFC belts. I can aim towards one. I can aim to like develop my career. Whereas, as I say, I still love my sport. I still teach my sport. I still think it's one of the best things to learn as a base. But fighting forever, it's not going to get you anywhere in particular, except for a good reputation within the world, which is a small community. Yeah. Like my, I had a K1 fight, and I remember fighting the lad, and after he went to him, oh, yeah, um, I expected you to just tip tap me. And that's the sort of like respect that we've got from a lot of other martial arts. You think that we're just tippy tappy touch each other sort of thing. And obviously I wanted to get past that and move on, get a bit of respect in the whole martial arts community. I gotcha. And how did you team up with Titanium Combat Academy? Yeah, that was actually through my friend, Michael Minard. Um, I'm actually sitting here wearing a blue top now. Yeah, I've always okay. got this on him. He's just gone pro himself. He's a boxer. Um, I was seeing him one day and he knew that I wanted to do MMA. I was talking to him, yeah, I want to do something. And he said, go, go down to Titanium, you know, got new mates down there, they're all sound and that. So I, I've been to every gym in Liverpool at one point or another, just sort of trying it out, had a little go. I'm not saying anything was wrong with them, but just I felt more at home with Titanium. I don't think anyone directly ever like was funny towards me, but doing karate and that and coming in like I always had karate pants on and everywhere I was going and that you know what I mean you get like a bit like who's this who's this coming in the gym sort of I, I understand it I've done it myself I've had people come in my gym wearing black belts and that but I went down to titanium and it was sort of the start of a new gym so there was no real egos or no one there to like be nervous of me or not want me there so basically yeah, yeah I went down there and started off met Gavin Hughes as we spoke about before and we got on like a house on fire yeah, brilliant. And that used to be the old Falcon pub, right? Yeah, the old Falcon pub, yeah, down in Neverly. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't, and, look like and, a, it doesn't look like a pub no more. <laughs> no. And when did you join Titanium? What year? Oh, lad, if you're going to keep asking me dates where I'm going to have a lot of <laughs> <laughs> I'd, say, I'd, say, I'd say three, four years. I'd, yep. say, I'd say around that. I, I thought, you know me dates better than me. So after my <laughs> first fight, I'd probably train, train Titanium for like six months, maybe. Yeah, you made your debut in uh, September 2017. Yeah, so probably six months before that, we were saying. Six months before that, okay. Yeah. And um, how much did you work on things like your grappling before deciding you were ready to accept your first MMA challenge? Um, to be honest, we just worked on a few key things, which we saw up one of them later that we obviously didn't work on enough. But we basically worked on as soon as I hit the floor, the floor is lava sort of thing, get up. Randy gets all saying, you know what I mean? The floor yeah. is lava. As soon as I touch the floor, hand in the face, getting my arm in the air, swimming straight up off the ground. That was basically our, our basic plan for the beginning. Just don't let nobody get me on the floor. Stay long range. And, you know, we should be sweet, which should work for a little bit. It did <laughs> work for a little came, bit. Came, came unstuck eventually, but it worked a little bit. It did. It really yeah. did. And prior to your MMA debut, you had a distinguished combat sports career winning multiple world champions. If you could yeah. put a number on it, how many competitive fights would you say you had? And what were some of your major achievements? Don't think I could put a number on it. <laughs> it's it's me earliest, mem <laughs> me earliest memories of being in sports arenas. I, I always say one of my earliest memories of fighting was my first tournament that I ever came second in. And then the tournaments after, I'm, I'm very young here, by the way. I can't, I can't, literally, I can't even remember how old I am. These like flashback moments that you can just about see in your head. And I remember spinning up kicking a kid. I remember they took him out in a little neck brace. He was only like, he was only like five or six. Nothing was wrong with the kid. Nothing was wrong with the kid. They just, they just seen a little kid crying. He was on the floor. They put a little neck brace on him. Come over here, mate. You know what I mean? But I remember seeing him with a little tear in his eye. His little neck brace on. That's like one of my earliest memories as a kid. I was only like, oh, four or something, five or something. You know what I mean? Wow. So that's just, that's just like a flash snippet. So, and that's just one of many days we compete. One, one day you could have 20 fights, you could have two fights as well. But True. we just rammed, not in, in and out. Um, biggest wins, biggest like moments. Yeah, um, achievements. Achievements, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. There's so many different little things flashing towards me. I'd say just beating certain fighters. 
that was sort of my main thing. People are there to get past. Um, like Dominic Aversa, um, his brother Fontune Aversa. Um, just, just so many names flushing, like sort of flushing towards my head that it's just hard to keep track, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'd say winning my first junior world title would be probably one of my proudest moments because I was a fat kid. You know, it was, it was surprisingly, yeah, I weren't massive, I weren't silly fat, but I, was, I had weight on me. So for four years straight, I was fighting in the plus 70 kilos at gram section from 13 to the youngest kid right. in the section for four or five years straight, getting absolutely pounded everywhere, like coming off going, oh, mum, I've got a headache. Going to Spain to meet people fighting this Irish lad. Shane, Shane, Shane he's one of my biggest things as well because he was 18 at the time and I was 15, I'd say. And beating him was one of my proudest moments. It's these little moments, he probably wasn't even the greatest fighter about, but it's just these little moments where I got my head whipped back in the fight with him so many times. Even after time, referee would say, stop, one, two, and he'd just nail me. And I was a little chubby kid. He was ripped to death, like fully grown man, 18, just like, might be being 19, like meant to be out the section, but had a year left to run over. And beating people like him, like I say, little moments more when I was a kid. Now I'm not too fussed on a fight to whoever's there, just take it as it goes. But them little moments as a kid are probably like the things that grew me from like a little <laughs> fat, self conscious kid to I've got a bit about myself, you know, like, yeah, I can fight these fellas, it doesn't matter, he's well bigger than me, but I'll just nail them everywhere. So, right. I'm like, riff, I'm, I talk a lot as well, lads. You're going to have like a bit of, once you start me, it's like putting pennies in the machine, you know. You're just going well, to be is... sitting there just, just talking at you, bro, constantly. So stop me talk... when you need me. No, no, no. Talk talk away. Talk away. And you'd be remiss of me, Marcus, if I didn't mention at this stage your father. Yeah. Alfie Lewis, a British pioneer and a decorated and revered martial artist. Tell us about the influence he had on you. Yeah, Rag me out of bed at uh, four in the morning. <laughs> um, run around Sefton Park. That was like, that again. This is when I was like 10. Um, just beast you, take you to the gym, get get trained for an hour, adults, fully grown men, and then he'd send you to school, straight home, two, three hours in the gym. So he had a significant, significant impact on the person that I am now and the martial artist that I am now. And okay. probably the main thing he instilled in me is mental toughness. Like, I don't believe you have to be the fittest, the strongest. Don't get me wrong, you've got to be fittest. <laughs> I'm not saying don't be fit. But fighting is about being smart and I think and being strong minded. This is not about, oh, I'm tough. I'm going to show you guys how I'm tough. Of course I'm tough, but I'm smart too. I'm more smart than tough. And uh, people watch on my record and they think, oh, this guy tough. This is not about tough. This is about mind. This is about how you think when you fight. Like, uh, you know, like this is about everything. And I'd probably say that's the main thing he taught me is just be smarter and be more tough in the mind. I see. And um, are you are you tough on your kids? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You know. I say my dad was tough on me, but at the same time, once I wasn't wasn't in the gym, he he wasn't always you know a bit of a bastard. Like he wasn't always you know what I mean. He, he could be, you know what I mean. It wasn't. I neither. It's just it's just made me the person. I'm just a still bit of discipline in me. I'm toughish. Find that hard though. Once you're talking to your babies, it's different, isn't it? Completely different. <laughs> it's hard. Com- very hard, very hard. So let's now look at your first amateur MMA fight against Danny Lyons yep. at Cage Warriors Northwest Academy 2 in September 2017. You may have been an O and O fighter, but as we've just touched on, you really weren't. Was yep. it difficult finding you the right opponents? Yeah, to be honest, they just threw me forward to Cage Warriors. Um, they threw, they threw that, we, we threw my name out there. I said to Cage Warriors, like, let's let's see where we go. Like, obviously, throws a few names. Hammer came out with Danny Lyons. Now, we didn't really have nothing to go on on him, but our very first assumption was he's going to be a grappler. He's going to be someone, obviously, I know Sean. Sean's, Sean's a good fella. I think the obviously, must have seen something in the gym, grappling-wise. Must have thought, Marcus hasn't done no grappling. We're going to get in there. We'll just get hold of him. And once we have, that's it. But obviously, as it wasn't right, obviously, sort of thing. It was a bit of a mismatch. I don't think he big really time. should have been in there. He shouldn't have been in there with me himself, you know what I mean? But no, big time. That was more, like, if I get put into a fight that I shouldn't be in, that's not the promoter's fault, that's Gav's fault. You yeah, know what I mean? That, 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 that's who it is. So, 
we both got put in there. I don't think he was ready himself for. He he wasn't. He wasn't. No, he wasn't. On has he fought no. since? No. I think he fought one more time. I think he's one yeah. and one. Yeah. I think he's one and one. So everyone was aware, um, including Sean Hammer Martin, of your. He, mar- yeah, he knew. He knew me. He, he knew. Told him. Yeah. He, like Gav, Gav said to me, "What have you done, Mark?" I said, "I know you're obviously a kickboxer," and I said, "What have you won? What have you fought in?" Told them they got it. <laughs> and sure, sure knew me anyway from just generally being in Liverpool. Of course, he's, he's only in Heighton down the road. That's like I could, I could be there in 10 minutes. So he, <laughs> he, he, he knew me, so it was just a bit of a mistake on their part, but it happens, you know what I mean. He must have seen something as grappling, but grappling is different to fighting, isn't it? Once all of a sudden you can get punched in the face, oh. and he just, he just wasn't ready, but. No, he wasn't. And did you feel any pressure to put on a performance given? Given that you were a name, I always say no. No, bit of a liar. Um, ah, you did. I, I, I didn't realize. To be honest, like I, I had a K one fight years ago. It's on YouTube. Like, I, I can't watch it. Makes Why? me cringe. If a terrible performance, terrible performance. I just, I didn't realize because me, I'd say with me girlfriend's brother's Thai boxing gym. And I came in, and obviously Thai boxers are quite basic compared to what karate do. You look flash, or when you're like this, bouncing your knee all the time, and it's a good, yeah. it's a good strong sport. There are, there are hard people, you know what I mean? It's, it's a hard sport to be in. I come in doing hook kicks, spinning kicks, you know, messing around. <laughs> we're in, we're in the gym, so you can do a bit of venting. They see like the most versatile you because there's no real consequences. No one's trying to kill you. Well, at first he did, but once you get to know each other, there's no yeah. real consequences. So I felt like. I didn't realise this until, to be honest, probably two years ago. I remember sitting there and going, that was pressure. That was that was pressure on that day. It took me like two years to realise even. But I just didn't put a performance on because I thought people expected so much. You know what I mean? People expected. But that's why I was eventually thankful for my loss, but I'm getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So, yeah, you absolutely put on a performance and without being too unfair on your opponents, you were just too quick and too accurate. Shades of Anderson Silva. You got the to, KO. Yep. Yeah, to be honest, I believe I haven't been like I am myself in the cage since my first two, three, two fights. I'd wow. say. I'll be talking about that in a bit anyway, but... Um, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the way I was fighting there, stand-up-wise, anybody would really touch me. When, when I'm like, when I've got that movement going on, once you see that stance, that, mar- that type of Marcus... There's not many people touching me. Yeah, so not, no, it's not, like agreed. I say, nothing's put on Danny. Nobody was touching me once I'm like that sort of once I'm that mass. Yeah, no, agreed. And less than two months later, you were competing at uh, Ice FC 19 in Manchester against mm. Kieran Chin, winning via TKO in 53 seconds. Right from the off, you were not looking to waste any time. Did you have somewhere to be after? <laughs> Gav Hughes hates this fight in the sense really? of um, yeah, in, in the sense of we, I came out there it's like the brush of the head kick calmed me down in the middle of the fight but um, I was listening to the wrong music in the background and Ice FC there's a bit of a case in that room you know that Tell room me. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good little show it's boss yeah it but is that room that you're in fighting I've never experienced these long waiting days Right. I've only ever really done tournaments where you turn up, you're running around coaching all different people, you're waiting to fight yourself, the say, section 23, you're on in 10 yep. minutes, and all of a sudden you just yep. put, shit, put your belt on, run over there, I'm ready. There's no sitting there for the six hours in a room where you can see the cage, you have a window. At the top. Above it, yeah. Yeah, So you're the top, sitting you there down. watching yeah, the watching. Sports. You're watching the murder between all the animals going on. You're watching it evolve, you know what I mean? People just having a bit of beef and you think, yeah, 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 you're getting hyped, getting hyped. Sitting there listening to the wrong type of music. Getting what are you up, listening getting to? Jay-Z in Paris. <laughs> just constantly, just, just, yeah, just, just <laughs> bouncing, just, just, just couldn't calm <laughs> that. Yeah, <laughs> bouncing around. Gav was just talking to me, so he walked me down. It's like after being four hours of hyping myself, Gav walked me down. And he's talking to me and I'm going fish for her. And he just <laughs> like that. And he said, he looked at me and went, you lost, aren't you? He went, calm down. He went, come back to me. Lad. Come back to me. And so like, 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 didn't realise the room, the environment, the weight. This is, this is all part of me learning, the, like, 
my graft, my trade, you know what I mean? Um, it got to me without me realising. So I came out all guns blazing. Like, the lad went to yeah. touch my hand. And yeah. I, I thought it was yeah. didn't, not a purposely meant thing. Right. I, I, would, I would touch his hand if we went back now and had the experience of being the you case would. time. I would touch his hand. I did not mean to sort of run at him. I'm not that kind of person. Um, I was just excited. Yeah. But and then I went in and I don't perform very well when I'm excited. I'm a relaxed person. I need to be relaxed, taking me shots, taking me time. He threw a head kick that nearly brushed me. I went, all right, Marcus. <laughs> and you sort of see in the fight, I sit down on myself, get my guard right, and then that's when we actually end up getting the finish, not long after, is after no. he kicked, nearly kicked me in the head. I grab yeah. him, clinch him, and throw a few knees. It was just rushed. I was just rushed. And as, as I say, it taught me the weight. You've got to like learn to wait in the back, not get too involved, have the right music on for the right time, relaxing yeah. until an half an hour before, an hour before. Get that exciting music on, build yourself up in the tempo, but experience. Fascinating. You know, if someone, if someone could hear that and think, you know what, is that a thing, is it? Especially people who do karate or boxing or yeah. something. Well, boxers are more used to it. But anyone who does my sort of sport, oh, I haven't thought about that. I, I, I turn up late. I turn up late to most shows. To be honest, I'm, I'm dreading going pro in the form of the docky, don't they? You know, you're not here on time, you're not getting money. I turn up late because I know they're not going to cancel me fight. <laughs> so, not, they're not going to cancel not. me on the night all of a sudden. Got a lot of fans there. I turn up late, the paramedics see you. I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running. Three o'clock yeah. start, I'm there at five. Yeah. But just because I hate sitting around. Doesn't bother me now as much. You know, I'll take the iPad, sit there, and watch the telly. True. Oh. True. Bit like the Diaz brothers. Just one more question. You said you got in late on Tuesday night. Was it because of uh you there know, the, yeah. He's here. Okay, I'm just he's just... here. He's here now. Right. You got any questions about the fight? I, yeah, relaxed the relaxed approach. Yeah, yeah, good. And uh three months later, it's time for you to make that walk again. Now under the bright lights of Cage Warriors, the biggest mm. MMA promotion in Europe and a card headlined by Molly McCann, who now competes for the UFC. How did you react to the news? Um, I was happy that I was fighting on a big show. I hadn't really yeah. been in somewhere. I've been, I fought in a lot of places with a lot of, a lot of people watching. Being on like Italy with concrete ballads mm. all around us and people like... Like you see on T, like sort of TV, where it's just like weird layouts, but hundreds of people surrounding you, watching you. I'm used to that ringing in your ears. That I'm, I'm used to it, but it was um, good to go, especially in the Echo Arena. It was that was that was the main thing. That's where all the big events happen in the field. So there was a little bit of oh, I'm getting to fight in the Echo, but at the same time, I wasn't really too asked. And on Molly, I didn't actually know Molly was at the time. Wow! I don't watch fight. I don't watch fighting. True. <laughs> I told you this. True. You know, yeah. I know who she is now. I follow, I've got follow her on Instagram, and I've, of course, watch, watch fight. And vice that. versa. Yeah, but I, I didn't at the time. You could say Molly McCann. To be honest, the only reason I found out who she was properly is because on me, I think it was the Mark Ewan fight. Oh, she went. Who's, she went, who's, yeah, she, she went nuts. She was the woman shouting me, and she went. She went who's nuts. This, um, what did she call me? A gymnast. Gym, she went, yes, she went to see right. gymnast. I think and I, I went, that's right. You, she lads, it's Molly. And I found her and I went, oh, it's right, Scouse three fights and that cool. No, and I'll follow you, you know what I mean? But at the time, you said Molly McCann on the shot, I wouldn't have known, wow. you know what I mean? There's a lot of you could have said a lot of names now. Go, who's that? Lad? Who, who's that? <laughs> you know right, I mean? okay, interesting. And once again, Marcus, you were just too much for your opponents, winning via TKO in 27 seconds so by this fight okay so by this point marcus you're three and oh with a total cage time of less than two minutes and you haven't even taken a punch you must have been thinking this mma game is easy no i was disappointed no why no no, no. I was 27 seconds yeah yeah it's cool it is cool but he sort of folded didn't he yeah he, just he gave did. up mentally i i think he's seen a spin he's, he's seen a spin kick which you want to come to later again Snippets ahead, snippets ahead, and you know what I mean. That's but all right. No problem. See, I, I, with a lot of people who I don't think about any strike, like a like major striking capability, you see me often just throw a loose spin and knock it. And I did that through a loose spin and knock it, I remember, I sort of, And then from there, I landed one or two kicks and punches, and he just, he gave up mentally. I expected a lot more from him. He, apparently, he's meant to be a bit of a lad. He's about, he's about doing things, you know what I mean? He's, I, I heard he's doing this, doing that. He's meant to be one of the boys. 
So I thought he's game. He'll have it. You know, when, when we were waiting in, I was like, I shook his hand. He was like, like you know, when yeah. people smile in your face and like trying to get in your head. And I thought, oh, he's game. He fo- fo- mentally folded and sort of ruined the night for me. To be honest, I was looking for, I was looking for a fight. I was looking for a fight. You know what I mean? So what was it about the performance? You said you wasn't satisfied with not the performance. It was sort of the way I never got to put a performance on. You know, right. I got to sort of got warm when okay. I was. Didn't get it. I was looking. To, we, we didn't want easy, easy fights. We wanted to we wanted fights. We didn't want basically. It wasn't straight away. Obviously, I had no wrestling experience. She wasn't going for ridiculous bloody Russians. <laughs> Larry was just going to start double legging me out and not killing me off of just taking me down. But we wanted someone who was going to push on me, try have a little go, come on the stand up okay. exchange and try and take me down again, so I could grow and ex- build myself. But just, we just never got it. To be, you know what I mean? We expected more than. You're just too good. You're just too good, mate. That's that's all it is. So um, so by this point, Marcus, you were certainly creating a buzz in the MMA world uh, with the likes of Paul Reed selecting you as one of the top amateurs to look out for. Could you sense the extra attention you were getting? No. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm very like that. I don't realise that I get attention. I'm very, um, I'm in my own little bubble. I'm in my own world, you know what I mean? I hope that if I ever do get major attention, that I stay in my own little bubble, in my own little world. You know what I mean? I'm just aware of the butterflies sometimes, to be honest. Don't, I don't realise. I get People will tell me something every now and then. They'll be like, lad, I was, I was in speak the other day on the bus and I was sitting there and I heard these kids talking about you. You're saying, have you heard this Marcus Lewis? And, you know, that's another area by ours. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, the deal. And then they say, my mate's saying, like, oh, lad, I was in a house party the other day and some lad started putting fights on and it was you. I was like, so I know that people have got a bit of a buzz and that my name is out there sometimes, but I forget. Not really. Yeah, it just doesn't sink in. No, it doesn't. No, not whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And three months later, Marcus, you're back competing on Cage Warriors Northwest Academy. And this time against Mark Ewan in what was a title eliminator with both of you on a three fight winning streak. You all by strikes and him or by submission. It was your classic grappler versus striker contest. Was that this, the kind of challenge? Was... Fights by submission, did he? No, the... Uh... Before that, before that. Three yeah, the free fight. That, yeah, it was, was I, all I, by... I actually didn't know that. Didn't yeah, know so that. it was a classic... I he was a Thai boxer. Uh, yeah, um, we wasn't particularly like searching for it, like I say. We just put our name forward again. Um, that's a name that came out to have by Cage Warriors. We said, wow. yeah, cool. We said, yeah, okay. cool. Not a... No, it wasn't like... I say I'm not looking for people in particular. I'm not really bothered. Whoever like be giving me a name forward, they sort of give us a name. We say, yeah, cool, let's go. Um, it was good, good fight, good experience builder. Yeah, very good experience. And uh, Mark's last appearance was against episode 14 guest Teddy Stringer, <laughs> who is ranked number four and the UKFC lightweight champion. Teddy sees you as one of his few remaining challenges in the amateurs, and let's hear. What he had to say. Yeah, I'd, I'd like that fight. I've asked for it a few times. Um, and I'm even uh, talking about Almighty. Um, when they're getting back up and running, I'd love to come and take his belt off him. But oh. I'm not sure if if uh, Ray will give me that fight. So we'll see. I can keep asking for it. But if they give it me and if he wants it, then I, I know how it's going to go. So how do you respond to that, Marcus? I'll take his UKFC <laughs> belt. How about that? <laughs> it's pointless in fighting me on all my C because I'm not going to gain nothing. He's not going to take me belts off me. You know, he's wow. not going to. So, might as well put his belt on the line. So, when I win, I get something for it. But to Triple be honest, C. I like him. I like the guy. I like from what I've, I've seen a little bit of him on your finger story and all that. I like him. He seems like a nice kid. He but is very nice. I, that's mainly what I see. I know he's a good fighter. I'm not saying nothing because he's young, but I don't look at a 19 year old and think that's someone I want to fight. It's not really something I do. I'm not. I'm, don't get me wrong. I will fight him. It's, it seems like it's on the cards to happen at some points. Yeah, I've got maybe two fights left. How much? Maybe I'm looking wow. for myself. That's that's what I personally think in my head. Wow, he's got maybe one or two. Correct. So I think Almighty have got something lined up. Maybe I've, I actually think Cage Warriors yeah. have got something lined up as well. I can't okay. really. I can't say what's going on with Cage Warriors. Apparently, the academy there's something going on with one of the other belts. Yeah. So from the, I can't say, like, we'll see. You know what I mean? It's meant nah, fine. something going on. But, fine, um, fine, fine. So right now I've got my eyes on that. Wow. I'm not really sitting there staring at him. But after I've got my eyes done with that, maybe done for Ray, 
with Ray. I maybe like I say, I'm a, I might skip that, go straight to him. The double tap does what the f- he wants. <laughs> we, we'll see what's you left in my, in my wow. mind. Wow. Well, okay. Maybe it's a fa- maybe it's a first pro fight. We'll have to see. I don't know. I, I will wow. fight the guy. Though. Either way, though, I, I will fight him. I'm, I've no thing with him. I think he's a good little fighter. Um, I've seen he was saying about Richie and yeah, Richie Lund. Connor. Oh, but, but we're totally different animals, mate. He thinks he's doing well with Katty guys. Connor's not fighting like he's used to fight. Connor, Connor is sort of he's adjusted the style altogether to be something he's not. All this hands down, walking around like Connor. Nah, that's not how he used to fight. That's not how your mum fights. I know his mum. His mum's a good fighter. That's yes. not how he fights. So that's not how he was yes. thought to fight. So he's yes. adjusted and changed. And it's just not working for him, I don't think. And then Richie. Richie went. He, at the time, he was pretty much brand new. So he got old and stuff. He grabbed his legs. Yeah. Oh, well. It happens, you know what I mean? To be honest, I think if Richie was a good grappler, like I am, I think if Richie could have staved off his takedowns and controlled them, I think Richie would have smashed his face in on the stand-up. Yeah. He's a good, good, good fighter, but with different animals altogether. He's just talking, you know, totally two different machines. Three different machines, sorry. I'm levels above the pair of them. No, no, fair, fair comment. Was you in I don't Richie's like saying corner? that, to be honest. I'm not a big edit. Like, people probably got, don't use that, just that clip. Add this on the end. I'm not a big edit. No, 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 no. It's just sort of, and uh, it, it is what it is. Fine. And was you in um, Richie's corner when he fought Teddy? I was, yeah. I was, you was, yeah. you I, was yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, to be honest, that's I had to me mate. I've had a mate Leon. Um, he's probably gonna watch this later himself. He loves him. He watched all. He watched all the other ones. He actually messaged me last night saying, "I let like this tell you, won't you?" I said, "So I already know." To get an Instagram mate, but he'll find out. So you're on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. he, he doesn't know what he's doing. You know what I mean? I so, see. So you can get on Instagram. You'll already know this. Wow. Um, he was. He said to me, "Oh yeah, Teddy Stringer, blah blah blah." I went. I went. Who's that? Said, I'm not, <laughs> not personal again. I'm not saying I don't know who he is. Because as soon as I sat there and thought about it, I knew who he was. I, I went, Richie, oh yeah, he beat him, didn't he? I'm sure he's quite a tasty kid. But besides that, I don't I don't know people. I don't know who no one is. Couldn't, I couldn't That's sit there. You could say there's top five amateurs in the UK, and I'd go, one, Teddy. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know them. You know what I mean? True, true. So you're not adverse adverse to fighting Teddy, are you? You're, no, but like I say, I'm not hungry you're up for, for him. Like he seems to be hungry for me. Yeah, like, he is I'll very fight, hungry I'll fight him. Like I say, right now, Possibly something going on with Cage Warriors, and Brilliant. in my mind, oh, it's it's a it's a good way. thing to look at. But it's, it's it's still the academy. Maybe something's do for their other belts. Yeah, yeah. So I can't tear my nose up at that sort of thing. You know, the chance to go out and get a third. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Triple you know, C. If, if if he's still there after it, I can come and get yeah. a fourth. If he's still about, if he doesn't want to go pro for it, wants to hang on for me and wait for me to get a fourth, then Teddy, I'll see you soon, yeah. Hey, Dana! Give me the fucking boy! <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Fantastic. I Thank like the kid. He seems, he seems like an all like kid. He seems focused. He's a brilliant he guy. Like, I like him. I'd give him, I'd fight him. No reason, though, I not, you know what I mean? But like I say, Excellent. He's, next. he's next. If Understood. Any. Understood. So back to the Mark Ewan fight. And in true Marcus fashion, you came forwards throwing all different types of strikes from all different types of angles, eventually landing a spectacular spinning heel kick. He's a very, yeah. very good young fighter. He's nice. got fantastic kicks. Oh, 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 oh my God, did you see that? Which got everyone off their seats and Mark down to the canvas. Mm. With the contact you made, were you surprised he survived? No. No? I'm mean, surprised. To be honest, I weren't even trying to hit him hard. That's why I fell over. Because I Indeed. threw very little. That's why I threw very little force into the kick. I wasn't actually expecting to land the kick. I just wanted to go near his face. I didn't expect him to foolishly step onto it, which is what he sort of did. Yeah, I was, at, I was just at the perfect range. I didn't. I wasn't. I was throwing it. If it hit him, it hit him. Cool. I wasn't like I'm gonna spin and kick him now. I was just throwing it to put it out there. Like look, lad, I'm about. I'm here. My legs are active. We're ready to go. Just sort of a threat. And then it hit him, and I went, oh shit, I hit him. <laughs> Yeah. Off it. So I weren't surprised though, because when I hit with a real spin knock kick, I've smashed about three jaws. I broke three jaws clean. I know that I've 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 heard tournaments stop so the doctors can sit there and check the jaws and all that. So if I would have hit him properly, no matter who you are, I don't care if you're a middleweight or a heavyweight, once a heel hits with my 84 key, well at the time 70 odd 75 key behind it, you're getting it. So I weren't surprised at all. Right. Okay. So following that exchange. He looked to clinch up 
and shut yeah. down your striking. Given yeah. how the rest of the fight went, were there the kind of rounds you needed in your MMA developments? 100%. To be honest, I was slightly happy for the... Not happy. No one's ever happy at getting beat. So I'm not going to sit here and say I was made up of getting beat because I obviously weren't. But the way I got beat and getting beat itself was both... First, it was a lesson. Because if you see now, most of my fights, I'm pretty much... I've took what he's done and I've ended up using it to too much of an extent, really. But, like, if you watch that fight back, to be honest, in moments, if you actually watch, there's moments I didn't... We'd work on the ground so much. It was our, our own short-sightedness a little bit to not think. He might just want to push us against the cage. We always we thought, he's going to get us down to the ground. And Marcus is ready to get up. So it was unprepared in this basically and you see at certain points I'm going to Gav I'm in this position got me wizarding got me hand in I'm going to Gav what do I do Gav <laughs> and Gav standing at the side going one two three four doing all these arm motions I'm going what he's <laughs> <laughs> going what what do you want me to do man? Whoa. so I'm, I'm trying to learn the actual now it's it's uh, I'm looking at myself now and think you fucking idiots. How oh, do you not know that's simple? Get that under hook and start tearing your body. You One little thing. Experience, you know what I mean? I just wasn't with the moves I had at the time, I just wasn't ready. He would always beat me. He should he should have always beat me in an MMA fight that day. Wow, that's um, which is what I, I needed. I went to gym Tuesday, my leg all mangled. Fourth on the Saturday. Went to gym the Tuesday if a mangled leg because he needed my leg good and proper, you know what I mean? And I got against that wall and lived on that wall. And then that's all we done for weeks was just drilling on the wall, drilling on the wall until like, it's one of my favourite things. That's my strength now. It's okay. become my strength. But I'm sure there's another part of that question which I haven't answered. You know, I feel like there was something lingering. Because I just no, 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 no. You've answered No, no, no. You've answered it. You've answered it. <laughs> my no, last you've swear, it. by the way, you're going to beep this or should I just No, 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 no. You can swear. You can swear. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. You okay. can swear. You can swear. So start of round two, Marcus. You came out all guns blazing. And that's when we saw for the first time in your MMA career. That cartwheel kick. Wow. I don't even know what to call it. Help me out, please, Marcus. Yeah, it is, is a cartwheel, cartwheel kick. kick? It, it is, is a cartwheel kick, yeah. Um, obviously, we, I shared the other day on Instagram, didn't I? Uh... The, when, when they land. Um, I've landed, I'd say, about six to ten. Yeah. Got like I'd say four good ones, six to ten overall. And then I've had plenty of near misses, skins yeah. that have just went past people's necks. <sighs> to be honest... I don't know, to be honest, that was probably a little bit of a frustration at first trying in that situation. There's more, you know, we had our back against the wall quite literally. Um, I thought that's again, beginning of the round, let's throw something different, just see if we can catch him. And if it would have caught him, it's, like I say, a front flip of 75k, all the pressure and one point hitting you in the face. It's going to get anybody, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, it was, just an, it was just an attempt. Wrong time to do it, if I'm quite honest, looking back at it like, but all part of my experience. It's really for the last 10 Absolutely. seconds to fight that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not asked if I get on the ground, I'm going to get back up. So that's why I'm just I'll, now I'll throw it whenever. You know what I mean? Just because I'm going to get up. So it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. And following that fight, Marcus, with Mark, you took eight months off. And in the lead yeah. up to your return at Cage Warriors 101, you said you felt a different person. And regardless of what anyone thinks, you're a different human being. Can you expand on what you meant by that? I just changed my lifestyle quite a bit at the time, it's just specifically at the time. I was on a few hours, I was on a bit of a, a mad hype, you know, um, for the inspirational videos all day, sitting there, just just listening, even when I was just waking up, first thing in the morning, going to work, riding my bike, running, listening, just to just develop myself constantly and wrestling. I had a, it wasn't meant to be eight months. I ended up having like a few little injuries with my knees and me, not, not serious, I have no ACLs or not like that, you know, just little Niggles. stupid things that, that held me back but at the same time I was just growing and growing and growing and growing getting healthy like my first few fights I'd like I'm, I'm sitting there eating breakfast the morning before like a full English you know what I mean just like not a clue like Gavin Hughes like I say shows me so much and he's worked on like basically not just like training it just more living it and at that point specifically that point I'm still living it now but specifically then like I had, I had a focus, a razor focus, and that's Mark's fault. Not not fault, but Mark's gift to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sort of that razor focus, which is it's carried on through to today. 
But I, like, yeah. it was ridiculous. I was shaking some days, like shaking, just in like, I couldn't even explain what it was. I was just, I was just lost. So I was just something else, you know what I mean? In my head, which you can't attain all the time. You can't live like that. Right. You can't live on that, that high level too much. You, you can be near it, ready to jump into it for your six week camp. But you can't be like, like I was anyway. Like I, I was mentally somebody else. I was some something else. But um, now I've sort of got the medium point. Um, okay. Got me food right, me diet right, me training right. I'm improving all the time. I've become a different person. I'm growing all the time. I see. And are you happy with the person you are now? Yeah. Yeah. I like myself, to be honest. I think I'm an all right guy. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I'm, obviously, I'm developing like, but MMA-wise, I've still got loads to develop. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with where we are. I wish it were coronavirus and lockdown, like, but we'd be, we'd be a lot fairer. But besides that, lads, yeah, I'm happy with what's going on. True. Well, it sounds like you've got the right sort of mentor in uh, Gavin. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Gavin lives it. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, he it. does. Yeah, he does. Uh, so Adam Shelley was your next opponent, who is a multiple world and European Taekwondo champion. Given your karate background, this was billed as a striker's dream. Were you excited to test your skills against Adam? Um, yeah, I don't know. As soon as, soon as I found out I was fighting him, I rang my mates from Dublin. Because I've got loads of mates in Dublin. Loads. Yeah. Absolutely loads. And that's where he's from, isn't it? That's where he's and from. I've got all, all kickboxers. I rang them all. Men's, who's, who's these kids? These Shelleys, the brothers? Yeah. And I rang my mates Tristan Barnett. Uh, yeah, to see him does the K one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's actually in SPG now, isn't he? Actually, he's a he is. with John Cavan and all that. He's going to be fighting eventually, very soon. Coming to be honest, um, but I rang him. I was like, just how was this kid? And he said, Marcus is a good kid, and that, but he's just not you. He said, he said, you, you, you know, your striking is just going to be too much for him. So obviously, we I went into the night just again, razor focused on that first fight, and just chopped his leg. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm we're going to talk about that later, but. That the first one, I mean, I was chopping his leg, chopping his leg, chopping his leg, chopped. That was that was setting up to be a lovely finish on the third. That the leg was absolutely destroyed, wasn't it? You know what I mean? After that, I said to myself, Big tall lad likes to kick. What wouldn't I like? Someone trying to chop my leg off. So let's just chop his leg off, you know what I mean? But yeah, I was, I, I was excited. I was excited to test myself because it all being wrestlers or maybe the possibility of grappling. This is this the first time where this is a new kid who's sort of like me? Let's see how we go, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, the contest ended in controversial fashion. You received yeah, really, a low yeah. blow. Yeah, you received a low blow causing your uh, groin guards to, to shift. Can you share what happened from there, please, Marcus? Yeah, basically, I was dominating that first fight. We had more than the second fight. The second fight's come a lot better, but I was dominating that first fight really well. Ticking his legs, legs, using what Mark had done to me, putting him into cage every now and then. A few foot stomps, a few knees to the legs. Yep. And as I was doing that, I put him in a slightly awkward position where he tried to knee me in the stomach. Yep. As he did it, my groin guard slipped slightly to the side. So now, here's where it's ridiculous because I've got him against one side of the cage, pressurised him, clearly sort of winning the fight. I stop and just start walking backwards and start doing this and going like that, but he showing, trying to show to Richie Mitchell that something's going on, alert him. So I've watched MMA under the times. Referees either say, you've got five minutes or shut up and keep fighting. It's it's always one or the two. I've never really seen what, what happened that night, happened before or after. Yeah. So um, I walk backwards and I try to signal, maybe amateur of me, you know, Kratty, we always do this. Time out. I mean, I've done, I done that and signalled. And I, I think he must have been staring at the ring beds or something myself because he did not realise anything was going on until... Until Danny realised I was his name Adam. Sorry, Adam. Until Adam, Adam. Adam realised that I was sort of trying to take time. I don't know why it was surprising because he seems like a quite respectful lad. He jumped on the opportunity to throw a few shots at me. No arm against him. You know he's in a fight. He's not inexperienced at the time as well. I covered up and I went all right. Sound. You're not stopping this, are you? Come ahead. Started throwing shots back just to show. Yeah, I'm not really easy. I'm, I'm you know I'm ready. And that's when he jumped in. As I'm starting to throw shots back, and he went, what's going on? He went, I went to my groin guard, mate. I went, I wouldn't have been asked if he would have just said a fight. I just would have cracked on. I went, my groin guard, I went, literally, it slipped. I, went, I need to adjust it badly. He went, you don't call time on the fight. I call time on the fight. That's the fight over. But I remember, I remember looking at him, and he was sort of, I remember him being like, 
I'm over here fighting. And he was slightly over there. And then he went, oh shit, oh shit. Like, like he didn't realise what was going on. And I was livid, lad. It was, it was, it was nothing to do with Adam. I shook Adam's hand after it. I couldn't let Richard Mitchell touch me after it, to be honest. I don't think, I don't think I'd want him refereeing me again. I don't really, I, I get, you know, I, it's a small, petty thing probably of me to hold it back. But like, at the time, you know, it frustrated the life out of me. I had a big audience there. We had a few hundred people there ready to come to watch me, come to see the, me in Liverpool getting the belt. But they sorted out in the end, so I can't really say much. Sure. No, yeah. it, it was upset. It was a bit frustrating and annoying more than anything else. Yeah. Well, Especially with the performance that put on. Yeah. No, I understand. I completely understand, Marcus. And uh, so Cage Warriors, and credit to them, Marcus, did what was right and scheduled yeah. the immediate rematch. Two weeks later, at the O2 in London, how was your preparation structured in the lead up? It was a bit weird because it's the you know obviously a weight cut, bouncing onto another weight cut. I know. Um, it was a strange Tony Ferguson. One. Yeah, it was strange, but um, I went. I went that night. I think I had like a Nando's the first that like on, after the fight. I said like nothing crazy, it's like you know Nando's not good for you at the end of the day, but it's chicken and rice you know what I mean it's not the worst thing you can ever eat so I had that and then just went sort of back into my diet stayed back onto it done light training I don't I treated it as, as if it was me last week and a half a week maybe where I'd turn up the gym just on the pads you know keeping me oxygen like just breathing veins the same very cardiovascular you know what I mean my weight was already down so that wasn't really an issue to worry about so it was yeah it was just light light training and keeping my weight down and I knew in my head I went, his legs knackered already. I said, I said two weeks. I said, he's still going to be not sore, but raw. At yeah. least. You know what yeah. I mean? And he was, and he was. So what was your, what was your mindset going into that rematch, Marcus, given what happened in the first encounter? Um, basically, I, I knew it was just about performing. It was just about not getting cocky, not being stupid and just getting in there and fighting. So I done that, but credit to him, he was I'd say slightly better in the second fight. He sort yep. of he adjusted. He weren't he having none of that leg kick. He, he had no. a few times like I still got him with it, but he weren't having it as much. You know what I mean? He, he learned, no. which that's just a credit to the fighter that he is. You know what I mean? He learned and adjusted. You know, it's kind of giving me a lot of shit for fighting him. Kind of huge. Really? He, but, yeah, because oh, you were yeah. meant to you you were originally scheduled to uh, to fight Connor, but that's something we'll get onto in a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, he was unhappy. He didn't think he was a worthy opponent. Even though in my eyes, out of two of them, Adam Shelley's a better striker. Out of two of them, in my eyes. Okay, well, that's interesting. I fought, I, fought, I fought both of them, beat both of them, so it doesn't do nothing to me to say either or. It doesn't do nothing for me. You know what I mean? Not putting Connor down. I've, if you watch Adam Shelley, he's a more K1 kickboxing experience. He's, he's tested himself a lot more, and you can see that he's a good kickboxer. You can give Taekwondo over here or there. You can see that he's a good fighter from the stand up. So I rated them stand up wise more. Okay, well, hold that thought. It was the Thank only you. amateur contest. No, that's fine. No, it was the only <laughs> amateur contest. Absolutely fine, Marcus. So the rematch with Adam Shelley was the only yeah. amateur contest that evening. And so you yeah. both opened the show. What was that like? Um, it was good. Um... It was just good mainly to be part of the pro experience. It was a good yeah. little glimpse. You know, even though I don't imagine it to be it wasn't much different than the amateur experience, don't get me wrong. Slightly more strict. Look, guys, be here on this time, or you're gonna get fucking docked. He's saying this to all <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not getting fucking paid. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> get me sick of money like what are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. Getting docked and that I was thinking, what are you gonna dock me? But, um, <laughs> yeah, he wasn't saying it to me, obviously, but he was just generally telling them, you know, guys, let's good show. It was great and boiling in the back, obviously, because it's cage warriors. Yeah. And um, it was good to hear his little source of talk. Yeah. He gave them all a talk and was yeah. breaking that like out. It, it was good. It was good. He, he was yeah. just, I don't really know much about Graham. I still, I still don't really. I, I'm not a big person to follow. I've got him on Instagram to see what's going on from a Nobby Wins Cage Warriors. But it was good to see that sort of little aspect of him, sort of, here's what's going on, guys. Blah, 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 blah. Make sure you're here. Make sure you're there. I was thinking, so this is where I'm going to have to be. This is how I'm going to have to be. Just learn. So it was good. Good experience, and obviously to be in the O2 arena, oh. it wasn't. I was a bit. I thought it was the main room. No, <laughs> it's the um, Indigo. <laughs> the Indigo, yeah. It, I didn't. No one told me that. I thought it was the O2, but it was still obviously going to London. 
um, staying over there, just me and my cousin getting that sort of fight experience, being there for two days. Because they only put me there for the day, but me coach, not me coach, um, Felly Rowan's our jam, um, our gym, jam, our gym, Gav Media. Um, yeah, Gav. He sort of, yeah, good guy, out of gold, mate. He yep. sent me down there another night before. Wow. So That's amazing. I could do on his expense? Cuts. Oh, yeah, on... he did on the gym's expense. Yeah, he sorted me out. He looked after me, sort of thing, sent me down. That's and amazing. Sure that was all right. Just so That's it wasn't amazing. like stress. If it would have been like weight cutting, getting on the train, like, uh, yeah. I, don't <laughs> yeah. have, I, don't, I don't have a bad weight cut. I never yeah. do. No. But at the same time, being on a train going to London. Yeah, you want to avoid that. that. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? You want, so You want to avoid it. It was a good experience. And uh, you won the rematch by unanimous decision, winning all three rounds and really mixing it up well. You were even forcing the takedowns. What was the thinking behind that? Um, on the takedown, i just seen the opportunity. To be honest, that was... My gym was called Mushinkai. Um, that actually translates into the No Mind School, which people probably look at and go, No Mind School? So you're running around like a mindless idiot. No, that, that, what that means is split-second glimpses of just doing and when I did that double leg there was no like I'm going to double leg in here I want, I want a double leg Instinct. I just something yeah something you know I'm not saying it was a moment of clarity the matrix was perfect and I <laughs> seen, I took the blue pill and went into <laughs> and I, it was just I felt it I felt it at the time I did it and to be honest I look at that takedown now and think oh yeah good little takedown but everything after yeah. eight how high my hips are off the ground my knees aren't controlled it was you know but it just happened. Are you ever happy? No, never. No. Never. There's not a fight you see stay from and say happy. Yeah. St stay that way. Good. Once you're happy, you're not going to learn, are you? That's right. That's exactly right. So after beating Adam, you got your hands on the coveted Cage Warriors Academy title, your first in MMA. How, how did that feel? And where does that rank in your overall combat sports achievements? Um, it was good. It, it was good. Um, I've, won, I've won a lot of things. I know, I know. Um, the shine sort of gone sometimes. Yeah, the, you were very, it, you were very calm. Gavin was like excited, and you were just like, yeah, another day in the office. So but, don't be wrong. Um, happy, obviously, obviously happy. It's another step in my career. It's something else to put on my bedpost. There's what I've done. Let's move on forward. Um, but it's still, if it was the cage, what do you spell? Maybe, maybe I'll be a bit more <laughs> But True. for me, it's still, I shouldn't say this because amateur fighting now is not what amateur fighting used to be, is it? You know, you get a lot of amateur fighters these days who are coming through and you can see the better than a lot of pros that are already out there. So to get an amateur belt is not like a simple task, but at the same time, I don't see it being like, ah, we've, we've achieved it, but yeah. No, we're not. We're still at the bottom and we're getting there. You know what I mean? In my in my eyes anyway. Yeah, that's the right, that's the right attitude. Well done to you, Marcus. That's good to hear. Thank you. So so now we come on to Connor. So you faced Connor in May 2019, my guest on episode seven, and a 14-time yeah. British kickboxing champion, also from Liverpool, for his almighty amateur lightweight belt. You were yeah. due to meet at Cage Warriors only three months earlier. However, Connor had to pull out due to a staph infection on his leg, leaving you to face Adam Shelley. You know Connor very well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't really want to fight him, to be honest. Wow. If, if I'm honest, he sort of disappointed me. Um, if I'm quite honest, bloody. I see the me saying, the message me saying, do you want to fight Connor? I said to Gav, don't say yeah, but just say as Connor said yeah. Okay. Because I didn't really want to fight him. I seen him as like a kid I know. Like I used to speak to his uncle a lot and you know like David. Yeah, David, yeah. You, even you though fought him twice, like, didn't you? Yeah, I fought David twice. He is yeah, I was sixteen. He was bleed twenty or do again. Boss experience. His uncle was a good fighter. Very you would look at him and think he's a good fighter. He had his very own style. Yeah, he landed egg kicks and was flash as well. But he had his own style. It was it was lovely timing. You know what I mean? It was time was crisp, and that's what he used to win on a lot. And that's what he beat me with. And that was another lesson I learned when I was a kid. I don't know how old David is. David must be like 35 or something like that. Maybe he'd going on to 40 of that. 40 when I was 16. 
and then a little bit later, maybe when I was like 17, 18. So I can remember them fights very clearly because he was a high level fighter, David. The first time I fought him, it was like oh, that was going that was going up a level. You know what I mean? But anyway, where was I? Wow! Because I've just gone off the track again. I like, no, no, no. Just pull me back, you know. Just get a rope pad and pull me back. I swear to you, where was you? No, it's shit again because I'm just chatting shit again. They said, <laughs> he said when, when the offer of, of Connor was Oh, yeah, put, so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm said, back where we are yet. So um, let me know, I said. I said, let me know if he's going to, like, if he wants to fight me. I said, cause I, like, I said, don't tell him I don't want to fight him, but I'm not really, it's not someone I want to fight. I still see him as just like a kid from the circuit who, like, I knew. It's not someone I really want to jump into a cage with and say, come out, let's have it. You know what I mean? I find it a bit mm -hmm. weird. Obviously, obviously I will. Which I did. But I found it a bit weird. So he let me down, like, in the fact of, like, he said, yeah, Connor accepted it. He's ready for it in that. And then he started chatting shit on social media. Started, like, proper... Like, I'm not a big social media person, like, for, like, arguing with people. But he started putting, like, a load of... I can't even think, like, some of the things he was saying. Like, just, just chatting absolute shit, as people do. And he disappointed me. He showed, like, a bit of a... a shitty side to himself. But... I think personally that was just because I was in his head already. I think he was just trying to big himself up and G himself up and get get himself ready more than anything else. But it was the wrong way to go out because doing it at my expense really, really like being cool. My ass has someone else done it. Like if, if what's his name was doing it, what's his name? Teddy. 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 If what, Teddy was doing it. I don't know Teddy. Yeah. So that, that'd be cool. He's going about it cool anyway. He, he's saying, I want to fight you, Marcus. What's he your belts? Cheeky chap. Cool. Whatever you know what I mean. But. He was just, yeah, chatting and shit, and I just, I just lost quite a lot of respect for him. He apologised to me after the, after the fight. But, yeah, yeah um, it was a bit, a bit weird. Okay. Due to your familiarity and history, Connor regrets investing too much emotionally. He felt he may have affected his performance. Were you feeling any tension or pressure? No. No? no. None at all? None at all. No. Wow. For me... I've seen him, I see him as a kid. He's not, he's not, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not much older than that. How old is Connor? Do you know how old he is? Uh, I think he might be 20. He's, tw he's, tw he's 20? I believe so. He's, he's, he's only, he's only 20. I'm, 20. I'm 27. 27 you are. So, so when I was 17, I was watching a 10 year old kid fighting yeah. on the tournaments. You know, I've seen yeah. him and, you know, I've seen him win as a kid. I've seen him yeah. get beat up by bigger fighters and he'll be upset. No reflection on him now. He was a kid. Exactly. Yeah. So the, no reflection upon him now. He's obviously he's a cage fighter. He's, I'm not saying he's a weak person. He's not. But I've seen all these moments. So in my head, I've seen his journey, and I know he's a kid to me in my in my mind, and I know his ability and I know my ability, and I was just never worried. I was just never worried. I I knew I was in his head. You know what I mean? Which I don't, I don't want to say I'm in his head. I'm a fucking some mental master, but he put me in his head. You know what I mean? It's hard for me not to be in his head when he's been on the circuit that I've been on for so, so long. I've been fighting for as long as I have, winning as much as I had. And, you know, as a kid, he would have been sitting there watching me fight as a kid. You know what I mean? Just as I watched him earlier, he would have been watching me, sitting there, yeah. watching the adults. So I was never worried, really. Yeah. Do you ever get so, nervous? Like I say, I don't realise. You don't realise. don't realise. We spoke about this on the... On the it's not nerves. I'd, I wouldn't say Nate. My thing is pressure to perform. Yeah. That's that's my sort of issue as I expect so, so much of myself. I still haven't put one fight. I haven't been in one fight yet where I've shown myself. There's so much more to come. I have not shown a glimpse of myself yet. I've shown glimpses, a little piece here and there. Not one fight I've had where it's been me. Right. And that's just due to the thinking about wrestling, thinking about thinking about all this. But now I'm getting comfortable before that. I'm going to let myself out of the box and just be creative again. Yeah. But sorry, where are we, bro? C catch up with me again because I'm losing us again. Go on. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. So it was a star studded affair with the likes yeah. of Darren Till, Mike Grundy, MVP, Molly McCann, all in attendance for AFC's first show in Liverpool. And you both had tremendous supports. Was that one of the best crowds you've competed in front of, Marcus? Due to what was on the line, yeah. yeah. Due to people being so invested in me and invested in Connor, you know, being in such close proximity. In, you know, it's, the Olympia is not a ginormous place, you know what I mean? So you can get up close and personal in there, you know what I mean? So I thought it was a much bigger crowd that have been probably just as excited, but with the room, the atmosphere, the way the crowd reacted to every single move and shot, 
it was yeah probably one of the best cars yeah good well up there it's a recent memory up there yeah 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 well ray thompson owner of almighty and my guest on episode 12 said uh afc 12 was the best almighty crowd of all time the best afc crowd you've experienced Let's go for AFC 12 at the Olympia. At Olympia. We had some really, really crazy fights that night. Uh, you know, we talked about the title fight with Connor uh, and, and Marcus, the two ladies that fought and left everything out there. You know, even the main event with Luke Shanks and Connor Hignett was was a good fight. So yeah, let's go with with AFC 12. That's a good that's a good choice there, Ray. So he certainly agrees with you. I, I, I can see why it was it was it was raw, wasn't it? It was it yeah, was really hard, like unbelievable. And then you had you had MVP who said that he specifically came to that show to watch you and Connor. Yeah, yeah, it was good to see Michael. To be honest, I've, I've known Michael for years since since I've been a little kid. Really? Um, again, yeah, just from being wow. on the circuit. My dad knows his dad well. Um, I think Michael's dad may have even has he passed? Has he? I think I think he has. Yeah, he has. Um, my dad knew his dad. Um, I know his brother Curtis. Not as well as, I mean, okay, Kay- Kaylon, sorry, that's his dad, Curtis Kaylon. Um, not as well as no Michael. He was sort of quieter, like when we was like sort of. Not anymore. Tournaments, but Michael's up, nah, nah, not anymore. He's, he's loud and brash anymore. Michael's always been loud and brash. And he's one of the people, again, I used to watch, like sitting there as a kid, fighting our fights. He's like Robbie Hughes. Right. He used to sit there and stare and watch all the time. He's like, someone to look up to. He's always come over. How are you? Okay, mate. So um, yeah, it's yep. been good to good to watch Michael. To be honest, and Michael was probably one of the little things that sort of pushed me more because I'd always wanted to do MMA and I see Michael do it, and he transitioned so well, very well. And as for us, you know what? Like it's just more evidence, isn't it? You know what I mean? It was sort of yep. I came in, still amateur, but halfway through the cave, all the crazy people coming in. But it's yep. still happening, isn't it? There's still a trend yep. of crazy fighters appearing. Definitely. But sort of that was the beginning, mate. Like. Wonder Boy, Michael's like sort of showing a proper flash. Obviously, after the auto, obviously, you know, the original sort of Kratty yep. man in there, but Machida. more our side points, Kratty, you know what I mean? Yep, makes sense. And given Connor is a high level striker, he was the one initiating the takedowns, sharing with me that it was part of their game plan. And in hindsight, he perhaps should have striked with you more. But the game plan was to take him down, take him down, beat him up. Then when he starts, you know, getting a bit, uh, getting a bit tired. Then start start striking with him, and possibly finishing from there. Um, but I, I, another thing, I think I was too invested on that game plan. I was too involved in. I've got to take him down. I've got to take him down. Whereas I'm confident enough on the feet. Did you have a game plan? And if so, care to share what that was? I was just going to go in, control the range, and strike from. That that was all I was going to do. I thought uh, it was build as a striker versus strike, and I had a we had a feeling though that he was going to do that. To be honest, I said to myself, "EC Mark beat me," yeah, and he went, "There's a weakness we can exploit." But I went home, fixed that weakness, made it a strength, and the weakness was gone by the time the fight came. You probably should have watched a bit of Adam Shelley fight and sort of realized. To be honest, I was even better by the time I came to Connor at doing it. Of if you course. see me sort of doing the cage press against Adam Shelley, if I watch it now, I cringe because I'm thinking, "Oh, how much space you're giving him at the hips? Your back isn't straight. You're not pushing into him." By the time I got to Connor, it's still not as good as it is now, but it was better. So it was too late to be using that tactic. Basically, if he would have fought me when Mark fought me and done it, maybe. But it was too late. Too and late. And that weakness was gone. Yep. And the third round would live in almighty folklore. It had just about everything, including knocking Connor down for the first time in his MMA career. Did you believe he wouldn't recover from those strikes? Um, I, wasn't partic- I never particularly threw hard hands there. No, I never particularly threw. Like, if you watch it, just more me just throw my hands. He sort of, I hit him, I break, I hit him yeah. with the left or right. And then he sort of fronts me as if to say, come on then, let's have it. Which didn't work out very well because I hit him with three more shots and he sort of wobbled to the cage. But at that time, I wasn't sort of thinking, let's take his head off. Let's, let's nail him. You know what I mean? But he'd done well to the cover. He'd done the yeah. old clever thing and grabbed me. But he did. My issue is after it, to be honest, that's a big mistake. I watch, when I watch my videos, I'm always looking for mistakes. And if you watch after I drop them, I help them up. I lift them off the ground. Yeah. So as, he, as he's going to get up, he's got his arm in the air, swimming, lifting up. And me, with the bollocks here, lifts his head up. I go, come on, mate, get off the canvas. Instead of going, rah, 
control them. Just little things that I learn, look back at them, think, if I've done that now, wouldn't have survived that. Wouldn't have survived that. What was the reason moment. you did that? The reason I broke off or the reason I lifted them up? Yeah. Inexperience. Inexperience. I don't know. It, now, obviously, I'd have my wizard. I'd push my hand down towards his head, control the horse by the head. I would, that's what I would do now. Then it was just like, oh, grab them, grab them, lift them. I, I know I need to hold them somewhere, but I'm not too sure where, but that's just, it's more of a fan now. You know what I mean? That was one perfect lesson for me. When I watched the video back, I went, what was that? I right. just helped them off the floor. But I digress. <laughs> now, who spotted that? You or or your coaches? Me. Obviously, Gav, Gav, obviously, he comes back to me every other week saying, look, I've been watching your videos. So I watched all five of your videos, watched all six of them the other day and comes back and tells, you know, we need to do this, 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 this. I spotted that one. That one. You know what I mean? There's a few things. There's obviously, Gav spots the majority, but when I'm watching... As someone who teaches martial arts myself, I'm always looking for mistakes and what's wrong and what's right. And that was just one I spotted straight off and went, what the hell was that? You know what I mean? But Fair he done well to survive. On the actual question, he done well to survive. Very. Yeah, yeah. done really well to survive. Uh, and were you happy with your um, endurance? Yeah, oh yeah. I felt fit. I, I, felt, I felt fit, to be honest. Yeah, I felt really fit, yeah. Um, last 30 seconds, last round, maybe. That's, that's where I just kept me in the cage because I sort of switched off. I said to myself, I was, I was counting rounds. I was counting rounds. You shouldn't really do that. I, but I was. I, I went back to the corner. I went to, I went to Gav. Round one, I went, yeah, that's my round there. Um, come back, was it? What rounds was it? I can't, I can't remember the exact order fucking now. It was that fucking long ago. But I come back and went, mine, mine, is mine. And counted them yeah, up like that. No. And I knew when we was in that last fate second, my body sort of went, oh, ready to go home now, bud. And that way, it was more the fact of you won this fight as opposed to you've got nothing left. Gotcha. You're like, that's just, you're just keeping me at 30 seconds now. Let's just fucking, let's go. He's not, he's not going to gotcha. try and escape anyway. No. So you were confident going into the last rounds that you'd won 100%, it? 100%, yeah. 100%. Yeah. There's a moment when we get up. If you watch the fight back, there's a moment when we get up and I stand up and I see him like on the, on the floor, like on his knees. And I said, oh, you finished. Yes, right, yeah? yes, yes. I, I, I yes. seen that and I said to myself, you finished? Yeah. I think that was at the end of round four. Yeah. I think there's one moment where he's on top of me. Like when he ended up on top of me in that round. Round three. He he ended up on top, didn't he? Yeah. And you see it with Adam Shelley. You see it with him. I'm winning. And there's no, I'm not under pressure to get up. I'm thinking like, it's hit. I sort of, I I, I made that round, which I won. But but, but sorry, which I won the beginning of. A more questionable round. Because I said to myself, "Mm, you've got him here. I'm used to counting points. I'm used to looking at a scoreboard and going, oh, it's 6-2. Oh, well, gotcha. let's, try, let's try a cartwheel kick. It doesn't really matter. So I'm counting rounds. I mean, I wish something I need to get out to myself. But you see me like when I'm on my back and he's doing these strikes that he loves to bang on Instagram so much on the floor, which, you know, is after he's just been dropped. <sighs> I'm not really asked. I'm not really in a, in a hurry to get up, to be honest, because I know I'm winning the rounds, I'm winning the fights, which is a bad thing to do because he could have hit me. He could have caught me. Yeah, bad things to do, but it's the way I think. You see me with Adam Shelley third round. I saw his get on my back, and I'm lying there. I'm going, and then you see me like third seconds. I get up. I just think, I like, know. Let's just get up now. Yeah, and I didn't see a point, but at the same time, tit should should not do that. Experience, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think they should have the judges' scorecards on the screen, like in between rounds, or not? Um. That's just that's a horrible one, that, isn't it? That's a horrible question, that. Um, I've never had that proposed to me whatsoever, you know. I don't think it'd be a bad thing, um, but you might get judges getting a nightmare. Yeah. That'd, that'd be the only thing I'd say is, you know, you're going to be getting judges getting a nightmare halfway through a yeah. fight. Yeah, true. Um, besides that, I'd see no problem with it myself, maybe letting yeah. the corners know. Exactly. Maybe that, but at the same time, it's down to you and your corner at the same time. That's the way fighting's been, isn't it? It's up to you to make your mind up and you to leave... No doubt in that judge's mind. But as we see sometimes, Canelo Triple G, you know, what's that woman's name? You know her name, don't you? The woman who believes scored the Canelo Triple G fight. Oh, yes. That's unbelievable. You get instances like that, you know what I mean? You're going you're gonna to get trouble. You know? So it'd be good to know halfway, but at the same time, yeah, you can get ridiculous scores, but <sighs> horrible one, that. That's a horrible question. Yeah, it just brings it just brings a bit more accountability to the judges. But look, man, it's it's just a disgrace that you have people that really don't know anything about martial arts and mm-hmm. they're judging martial yeah. arts competitions. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got to think every round. They've be, got, yeah, they've, they've what act- saying, Andy. exactly. They've they've actually got to score it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed <laughs> to going at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end, like yeah, 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 yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Exactly, exactly. Maybe just the coaches. That might be a good idea. Though. Okay, interesting. So it was a great contest with it winning fight of the nights and Ray describing it as one of the best AFC amateur title fights, which is a big statement indeed. Would you be interested in the rematch? No. No. <laughs> no. That was a unanimous no. I swear to God, like, no. Wow. I have no interest in Connor Hughes in this light. He seems to have an interest in me thinking if he strikes better than that. All that happens if he strikes is he's going to go down. He's not got the striking capabilities to do that with me. I'm telling you now. That was the best night he was going to get with me ever, period. You know what I mean? Now I'm a better wrestler. I'll throw him. I've been watching his wrestling. He hasn't evolved. He's still getting held up against the cage and still not fighting back. I learned from when I got held up against the cage. Nice one, Mark. Mark Hewn. Appreciate it. He hasn't learned from when Marcus Lewis done it to him, though. But you see, in the next few fights, he gets against the cage. He stays there. He's not evolving. He's sitting on his shots. He's too comfortable. He's too cocky. You know what I mean? I have no interest in him whatsoever. Unless he goes and does some big things. You know what I mean? I have no interest. Teddy, yeah. Connor, be asked. Okay, well, after after being in there for 15 minutes, it was nice to see the two of you embracing at the end. It's what it's what martial arts is known for, and perhaps yep. the thing I and perhaps the thing I love most about it. So well done to the both of you. That was uh that was classic. Yeah, you know, I, I may be giving Connor a bit of hard time, yeah. That's that's just because like we fought and I thought it was over. You know what I mean? I thought that was that and I wouldn't hear nothing about it again until maybe one day when he was ready to fight me again. But it's just instantly saying it's still, oh, you know, if I would have done this, then I would have won. You know, fucking I made Bentleys, I'd be a millionaire, but I'm just, I just fucking don't. You know what I mean? I'm not going to start doing it anytime soon. So just, I'd rather he's left it to bed, didn't mention me no more, and I can be cured from him again. Like, I haven't spoke to David since that, you know, which is a shame. I used to message David all the time. Ended up having made at me gyms and all that because obviously people were upset. It ain't me. I didn't argue with him, but people were upset. So I'd rather than just leave it. Just not even like mention me no more. And we can be cool again. You know what I mean? But like, we're still, we are cool now. He apologised to me after the fight. He apologised to me in the middle of the cage, which I took him and cool, left it at that. But stop saying you're going to beat me and doing this, that, the other. You know what I mean? Just leave it there. Okay. Well, Marcus, you're now the champ champ of two major UK promotions, a difficult and rare achievements. How proud were you? You've seen me interview, you know. You know the answer <laughs> to this You've seen me all like, Of course. Oh, my interview, yeah. yeah. Just another step on the ladder. Just another step on the ladder. It's, it's a, good, it's a nice, nice thing, but it's just another step on the ladder still. I appreciate them both. Good organisation. Not many organisations I could say, like, that's another one I want. Maybe, maybe UKFC, Teddy. UKFC, but yep. Besides that, no, there's not, I don't know all the amateur organisations, so I could be undercutting some people here. There is, there is a few bigger ones as well, or c- comparable ones, but obviously a name like Cage Warriors, six speaks for itself, and Almighty, he's got a quite good reputation within itself, so I'm quite happy to be representing both of them as the champion. Excellent. Brilliant. And uh, in September of 2019, Marcus, you faced Alao Abassi fighting out of Valencia in Spain at PFC in a contest not on your official record. This is number one bullshit. Which is a huge shame. Bearing in mind, it delivered one of the most audacious submissions you will ever likely see. Describe it to us, Marcus. Uh, basically, so I landed the spin side kick. Um, he was having like a, it was a weird, a weird fight, a weird night to be honest. I just didn't, I didn't seem to get in gear. It was a weird little night, but so I said to myself, "You need to switch it up on him a little bit here." I threw a spin side kick, hit him in the stomach, and as I did, both of his feet hit the cage. So both sort of he went, he, he sort of stepped back, put both feet square, and sort of fronted me like what. So as he did that, I thought, oh, oh. Just ah. opened up. You just give me the opportunity. There's your head at its peak, waiting for me to swing around and get it. So I threw the cartwheel. Spins with the kick to the midsection. Oh, then like a cartwheel kick. Wraps that left leg around the neck of Getty. Getty postures up. Oh. 
and it's all over. What a finish from Lewis. And <laughs> <laughs> everyone hates this car. We'll, you know, no people that train with me and Gav, they hate it. Of course. They just see it as, a, as an unnecessary risk sometimes. Yeah, which it is. Yeah, because you leave yourself open. I know that. It's an unnecessary risk, but at the same time, if you don't get highlights, it's flashy. You know, otherwise, if you don't take a risk, you know what I mean? And when they land, they're effective. But anyway, so I tried for it. The cartwheel kick, I wanted to knock him out. That was my first thing. I wanted to just get him, land it, done. He's, boom, ducked down. So as he's ducked down, he's ended up hitting basically in between my legs. And he thought, yeah, let's get in. Went to grip my legs. But as he's done that, I've ended up getting one arm through and just getting straight into the triangle. Just triangles or something... They're a bit of a weapon for me now. Thanks to Sneaky Bollocks. Yeah, you know, you know your ass, sne- Sneaky Bollocks. Yeah, someone I roll with on a regular basis, Ben Kiffin, the young fighter. You know, the young lads are team with Ben, ben Kiffin and Keen. 2 and 0. Yeah, Keen Roach. 2 and 0, yeah. And I think Keen is the same, is he? But yeah, so Ben is a little jit said, I call him Sneaky, Sneaky Bollocks. So he fucking triangle, try to triangle me all the time. And obviously counselling that triangle and then working on my own triangle to make my triangle stronger, you know what I mean? It's become a real weapon for me. So when I got that opportunity to, he, as he came in, it was just instinct. Throw right. that triangle on. I felt it. It, it. it wasn't. Some people have said like, oh, lad, a, fl- a flying triangle entry is the sickest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. You, you haven't seen you haven't seen one yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It ended up being one, but that's not it what did. I was trying to do. But... I fight IQ, reactions kicked in, and we ended up getting something good from it. Yeah, I mean, that clip alone went went uh, viral, and on Fighting Labs on their Instagram page, that's got over 216,000 views. How does that make you feel? Why aren't you following me, guys? Hey, <laughs> only got, only got 2, followers. Hey, 216, where's the rest? Wow! I've got where's some the stuff and wizardry for you, straight from Hogwarts, landing all cartwheel kicks. Spinning kicks and all that, knocking people out, choking people out. Get on me, you know. That's fucking illegal. I'm happy. Correct. 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 Stop grafting Absolutely. what you're after. Ready? Let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Conor McGregor, in the lead up to his fight with Dustin Poirier, was excited about fighting as much as possible in order to create highlights you can sit back and watch later. Do those kinds of moments have you itching to get back? Yes, I know. Um, oh, I'm, not chasing highlight- I'm not chasing highlights because it's, 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 I'm not a highlight chaser if they come they come they, you can't chase them otherwise you don't get them but um, I'll tempt them but I'm just generally looking forward to get back anyway it's been far too long my girlfriend hates me you know <laughs> me, I'm just intolerable when I'm not fighting you know what I mean there's nothing going down for me I need to be like this lockdown the first one sent me a bit mad sent me a bit mad the first one because I didn't not enough, obviously, I went out running down the streets, hate Ledger style or not like that, you know what I mean? But what I mean is, I was just a little bit... I've got so much inside me ready to come out, and it comes out through punching people, kicking people, and wrestling people. Not even trying to hurt them, just the no, actual no, no. physical activity. And I saw it was one of the people that switched off in the first lockdown. I went, uh, I've been here for a while. I sort of switched off in the second one, but this third one, I haven't, so I haven't stopped. Training right now, mate. Every, every, it's been too long. I mean, I didn't stop training, but I didn't go every. You weren't. You, know, really you weren't on it. No, I was just training, learning new things, which don't be yeah. good as well because it's involved it's, me grappling. When you're not chasing like to fight all the time, you can just go all right, sand. So stuff in this wrist, stuff in that, doing this, doing that. But um, where was we? Sorry. Anyway, like I was saying. I forget what I was saying. I smell gas. We got people sneezing. Well, let me ask you a quick question. No, no, I don't okay. remember right now. <laughs> hey, wrong with you? <laughs> I digress constantly. That where are we? Sorry, what was the original question? Highlight reel. No, yeah, so yeah, about... no, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Where it all boils down to, yeah. So, as ma- as mentioned, Marcus, that was your last competitive outing, and we've all missed watching the champ champ in action. However, it has not been for the want of not trying. You were scheduled to appear on Almighty and against different opponents. It started with Mike Thompson, then Kyle Jones, followed by Bradley Owen, then back to Kyle, and finally Tommy Coyle. Did I miss anyone? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we, we talk a lot of names. We just said, yeah, 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 yeah. We was just, it was at the point of this just before the last lockdown, innit? Yeah. We were just looking, we were just looking for a fight. 
And we said, yeah. And to be honest, I was quite, I was quite happy with who we ended up with, Tommy Coyle. Yeah. I was sort of, I was semi looking forward to fighting him. He's not the flashiest person in the world, but one thing that I'll say for him is he seems tough. He seems like a tough lad. You know he what fought, I mean? From um, the... He fought Richie Lunt as well. At ice. Is he the one Richie saw to beat, but yeah. he never gave him the victory? No, he, he lost, I think, um, no, that's what I'm saying. the, the decision. Yeah, split decision, I yeah. think he was. At Richie ice. Won that. Richie won that. At ice, yeah. But from watching it myself, Richie won that fight. He just sort of, he gasped the last few seconds, and as we say, judges aren't always accountable. Yeah, you know what I mean. Personally, I'm, I'm an honest person. If he lost, he lost. I'll just fucking say he lost. I actually think he won that fight. Oh, it's not as exciting now. Now that you say that, yeah, it's not as exciting as a prospect. I just YouTube them. You see, I never seen the Richie Lump one. I just seen him. Um, I don't know names. I'm shocked. You were there, names. wasn't you? I was there. Yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> you, know. you were there. I wasn't there. <laughs> what I mean is, though. What I mean is, you said, you know. How many fucking cunts were shouted out over the mic that night? Can we have Tommy Coyle? Can we have that? I, I, I don't pay attention to the person we're fighting. Okay. And in an ideal world, what does 2021 look like for Marcus? <laughs> a fight, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully hopefully we just get a fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I've said, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's 100% or how much I'm allowed, like, should be, should be saying me until, like, it's not up to me to say. No, don't. Um, like, but... So uh, that's what I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to yeah, be very don't. specific. I'm not going to be. Specific. No. I'm, I'm not getting paid. I'm not going to be specific. It's just Good. another belt, more the more the academy belts, possibly. Really, um, excellent. Oh, hopefully, that's that. That's about that. You know, soon just, just talking about it as soon as possible. I'm, yeah. I'm open. Cage, what is your best bet right now? Isn't it? Uh, it's, well, it's actually, with them, with I mean, what I mean is with them being um. They got the go ahead from the government, didn't they? They have official go ahead. So, so, so once it starts again, they're on a good foot to get the fights going first. Aren't Are they? they going to be doing um, amateur fights? So they've I'm only been hoping, doing pro. That's what I'm. I'm hoping that once they get the go ahead and it clears up quicker, that they'll throw us in straight underneath as sort of like a prelim card. Right. As, 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 as that's me hope and okay. and thing anyway. Obviously, they've been speaking to us about it, so that's what I took from it. Okay. So we've well, also I'm got very much. Good. Well, also, well. right, yeah, well, Almighty is a bit 50-50, but you've also yeah. got Celtic, Celtic Gladiator. They've they've successfully run two shows during lockdown. With, with and a third... I, was, um, I sort of missed the boat on that, didn't I, during lockdown? It was basically when yeah. lockdown came, it was yeah. you lucky enough to jump on the right show. Yeah. And everyone that jumped on that Celtic Gladiator, is it, or Celtic, Celtic Warrior? Uh, Gladiator. On Celtic Gladiator, yeah. everyone that jumped on that, they were the lucky, lucky few that got to fight. Man was like a week or two after, and we got all no cancelled. Um, yeah, just, true. Just true. one of them things. If I would have been on there, I would have been fighting. But true. You know, but they've got from the future and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Uh, hindsight. That's the fucking twenty twenty. Yeah. Man, hindsight. No, <laughs> that's the one. Bro. <laughs> yeah, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But uh, yeah, Celtic Gladiator, they've got a card scheduled at the end of uh, at the end of February. No, nah, to not gonna, no. Not gonna, no, it's not. It's not that I won't. It's not going to happen. I don't think. Under this specific lockdown right now? Uh, well, they've managed to do two previous shows under lockdown. That was the second lockdown, though, wasn't it? Was the second, second lockdown. lockdown. It. Correct. It wasn't correct. I don't, I don't think it's as tight like as this one is right now. Right. Fair enough. But okay. I So I was speaking to Ray before our one was cancelled, and I was actually messaging Ray saying, Ray, are we fighting? Because I knew in my heart of hearts that it was going to just cut off. I, I had a feeling. I don't know why. I just knew. And I messaged him again. And he's like, yeah. And I, you know, credit to him. Once he knew, he messaged me and said, Marcus, it's not going to happen now. Yeah. But when he did, he obviously it was up in the air. Nobody knew. No one no one could say, yeah, I'm on 100% or no, I'm not. Celtic right. could have been unlucky and they could have got cancelled and Ray could have been still on. Yeah. But I don't think under this current lockdown right now that we're due to see any amateur fighting for a while. This is number one bullshit. And this is the likes of my mate Ben in Huddersfield. There's a few things going on which we won't mention. Okay, well, that moves me very nicely onto the, on, onto the next question. And before we look at your flash fives, any upcoming prospects at your gym that we may get to hear about in the near future? Yeah, first off the top of my head is what I call the young guns. The young dogs, sneaky bollocks, sneaky bollocks, and Kieran. So Ben, Ben Kiffin, and Kieran Roach, or Syrian as I call them. Okay. Um, so he's off the top of me at them too. Yeah, and then we've got so many young kids coming through as well. We've got the likes of Alex. He's a, he's a Thai boxer. There's 
too many names. To be honest, put me on the spot here. I should have really written a little list, shouldn't I? No, 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 that's all fine. Yeah, I should have really known. But yeah, we've got, we have got quite a lot of lads coming through, especially on the younger side. That are, we've got some good things to come. Good. And we good things. So we got we got Tom Peel. He's got a belt as well. Yeah. Um, like like I say, threw, threw me on the spot. I'm a bit of a tit really. I should have had all this ready, but there's so many. That's fine. Through. You want to see big things from as soon as we're all, as soon as everything's going again, you see things happen very soon. Excellent. Okay. Well, we now move on to the final segment of the show, uh, Marcus, and that is called Flash Five. I will ask you the following five questions, Marcus, and you very simply give me your best answer. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. So the first one, Marcus, who would you love to compete against, either dead or alive? That's a tough one. Not many, because you see, when you're asking me to compete against these people, like they're either your idols or your heroes from the past, aren't they? You know what I mean? Um, so it's, I would like to compete. I'd like to sit down and talk to them for an hour. So it's, it's. Now I've got I've got a few weeks. Like, <laughs> can, I can, I can we do this as like a sparring session? It's like a full on flat out. Because I'm gonna throw some tall lords out there. A full on, a full on, a full on fight. I'd like to see what GSP felt like. Ooh, I'd like shout. to see what he. I'd like to just see what he felt like. You good know, shout. for someone more, possibly the one of the greatest wrestlers in the UFC who wasn't a wrestler. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see how the striking and how it felt to feel his time. That's it's more me wanting to be on the other end and feel like how he controls that split second timing. How he grabs that leg, just it'd be more of a learning experience than anything else, just because he's such a technical minded person and a real thinker. So, yeah. failing that, if I was angry, one lay silver. Because I want to fuck, I want to fight with Chuck here. Fuck Chuck! He's an absolute animal. I love him. He's one of my favorite fighters. I've got a big giant autograph off him upstairs, Brad. Really? If, yeah, big massive he's one. A... Like, um, it's good that it is, but I'd. Just out of sheer, they'd like to say to me heroes more than that. And also, I just like to test myself against them. That's basically all it is, you know what I mean? Great, 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 great choices there. And GSP, would you consider him the greatest of all time? MMA I'm talking about? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Possibly. He, he's so all round, isn't he? He had the striking yeah. ability, he had the wrestling yeah. ability, the timing. Um, people call him bot. I remember one point when I was a kid, when, when fight people didn't understand MMA, everyone yeah, called them boring. Boring. When when people when we didn't understand, but now we yeah. understand. And you look back, you go, but the hell, he was so technically minded. Genius. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And uh, your ideal way to finish an opponent. Nice and early, so I can go home and have an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just nice and early. Get Anything. And and whatever it may be, I don't I don't really care. There's no shot I want. It's just whatever shot lands and does the job. Okay. All right. The best combat sports fight. Leg kick. Leg kick. Leg kick. I, uh, I want to finish a leg kick. Had to be kick. a kick. Sorry. No, it's okay. Had to be kick. a kick. Had to be yeah. a kick. Of course. The best combat sports fight you've seen, Marcus. Oh, bloody hell. I know. I've seen so many boss fights. Um, Ian Hollis and Robbie Hughes. Um, these might be like out there names for you. I don't know whether they are or not. Ian from the gym. Um, exactly. Hurricane martial arts, I think they are. Yeah, Hurricane, yeah. And Robbie Hughes is now a dentist to Jürgen Klopp and bloody the whole Liverpool team. Doc, Dr. Robbie Hughes, follow him on Instagram for me, guys, yeah. Top guy. Um, used to be a ridiculous fighter. Seeing them two clash was some of the best fights I've ever seen. Robbie versus Robbie Lavoie from he's, a, he's basically was a Canadian counterpart to our Robbie. And the fights you used to get, the speed, the movements, it's just like nothing you see. MMA-wise... Um, I go to boxing first Morales versus Pereira one of my favourite clashes of all time just absolute all out Mexican blood feud going yeah. to war yeah. MMA is a hard one because there's just I, I don't want to say one thing and miss something else and just I'm going to say tough mid so watching wise not the best fight you're ever going to see but one of the most exciting Romero and Costa not not the best yeah. fight I've ever seen. Oh yes, yes. Not the best yes. fight I've ever seen, but just off the top of my head, to recent memory, one of the best scraps I've seen in MMA. There's well yeah. better fights out there, but oh, you caught me off guard a little bit. So um, that's I'll okay. Go with That's a good choice. Sheer animal power. 
Absolutely. And what superpower would you choose to have, Marcus? Flight. Flight. Flying. Flight. 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 Yeah. I'm a cog butt nerd. I actually sat there thinking about this for a little bit. I have yeah. discussions about this. So I don't know whether I'd like some Deadpool-esque sort of regenerative abilities or Wolverine. So Wolverine because he's quicker. But you'd be able to do a fucking all sorts, wouldn't you? If you can't die yeah. and meet all the shit you'd go through. You know what I mean? I'd be underwater catching them fish bear hands. I don't want to <laughs> the fl- Flying is obviously, I think that's a lot of people's go-to, isn't it? Yeah. Just the general thing of flight. Great answer again. And the final one. Let's see your answer to this one, Marcus. The best finish to a fight you have ever seen. And, and you can't include yours. Um, best finish to a fight of person you've ever seen. Correct. You know, if I weren't talking to you, yeah, I'd sit here and rip a million off for all of a sudden. Now you're on your phone. Let's <laughs> 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 oh, give me a little second on this then. Um, there we go. go. Check Congo, Pat Barry. Ah, oh, what a comeback. You know what, what I mean? That's one of my favourite finishes of all time. Pat Barry on the ropes. That referee, who was refereeing, that was that hair, was it, or was it the big, I was it big top? I can't remember, big, I just, big, I, uh, big John McCarthy. Big John McCarthy, he gets uppercutted, boom, no, it's not, it's the ball fella, it's the ball one, who is it? Oh, um, the uh, Dan, 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 Dan Sutton, Mercuriata. Mercuriata, oh. that's the one, yeah, so it was him. Who? <laughs> he get uppercutted, boom, down, he gets up, uppercutted, left hook, down, the ref, he's in and out, the referee's like rats. Barry comes in, um, Congo comes up, that uppercut, sleep, Barry goes to sleep, raw, just like, watching that, that's, that's me excited right now, to be honest, thinking, even thinking about that, that's one of the best comebacks and knockouts all in one, got Amazing. everything, Nanny. boss. Amazing, great, great answer, yep, brilliant, excellent, well, thank you very much, Marcus, that brings us to the end of the show, how did you enjoy that? It was good, bro, I, en- I enjoyed myself, um, Excellent. Might get into this a little bit more. <laughs> Might speak again at yeah. some point, some point in the future. Hopefully so. Anyway, I'd, I'd appreciate it. So it's been a good time. Thank you for having me. No, you're welcome. And um, as soon as you win your next fight and your triple C, we'll have you back on. How's that sound? Sounds perfect. Sounds good. Okay. Well, Sounds thank perfect. you again. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Thank you, Look forward to that. You're welcome. And uh, thank you again for coming on, Marcus. And I speak on behalf of everyone when I say I can't wait for you to make your long-awaited return sometime this year. And thank you to the viewers for joining Marcus and I on episode 15 of Flash Knockdown. And in the words of Bruce Buffer, the show that engages with people of the combat sports world. Thank you to everyone. And thank you to Marcus. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you very much. Thank you.